Welcome to using procedural textures. In this video we'll be introducing procedural textures and applying some to the checkers on the board. So let's hop straight on over into Blender. Now procedural textures are very similar to the image texture that we've just placed on the board. However, the procedural ones often do rely on the diffuse color that you set for the, uh, the material itself. So if we go to our chessboard itself, we'll see that it has two materials applied to it already, a white square and a black square. Great. So we're going to select the uh, black squares in this case, and we're going to go to texture. And I'm going to create a new texture, and I'm going to call it black square so I don't get confused. Black square. Excellent. Now, when before, when we were adding uh, here with the type, image or movie, we've got all of these other options to choose from. Now, each one of these will have a different pattern. If, if we pick it, we can see that straight away we end up with this, and what all looks like a pink leopard skin going on. Uh, we certainly don't want that to happen. Um, the pinkness there and if we scroll right down we can see the other color it's bringing in just down here so in this case we can change that from pink to white or a blue or something else maybe even orange who knows and <laughs> that really does look like a leopard skin at this point in time now if we zoom in a little closer, we are in the rendered mode at the moment, we can see that there's this horrible line going through the middle of our square. Now I'm pretty certain that this square is what we call planar, i.e. it's completely flat, however it's trying to probably do a UV mapping to our, and yes it is here, mapping the coordinate system to UV. If we change that to generated, well it looks a bit odd, and that's because now that texture is spread out amongst all of these because it's much larger than it was. If we try object, it's gone really, really small. If we set the object to the chessboard, well, that's, that's still a bit spotty for my liking. So we've got some options here that we can go through. I do prefer generated and perhaps if we were to make it a little smaller on the X, Y and Z, I like the way that it's spread out, making each one look um, considerably different. However, I'm not too keen on the type. This uh, looks more of a tortoise shell now it's this big. So we can go back up here and we can change it to something else. And there's loads of different types that you can choose from. Most of them will be seen as a kind of noise, if you will. And there are various options. So we can see this, I think that's pronounced Stucky. Um, if not, do forgive me, but it, that is the type of procedural generated texture that's going on here. If we change that to clouds, then when we scroll down, it would have changed to some cloud options. Oh, oh I quite like the clouds that it's put on there. Let's see if we can play about with it a bit more. So if I change that to hard, oh, that's much better. It's got sort of a grain to it. don't know quite how to explain it, but I do like that. Let's play with the depth. Does, let's just shoot it up as high as it will go. Often the best way of seeing uh, the difference between what these options will do is to go to extremes, high and low, at uh, size. If we go a bit higher, we can see that's spread out across the entire board. Uh, probably don't want that, so let's go back down to pound point two see what point one looks like oh that's a bit messy that low so again you can go backwards and forwards and find out what you like now I I like that pattern but I think the orange is too bright so I'm gonna go back to our material and scroll down the diffuse color here is black because it's a black square so sorry it's not that one it's this color here and I'm literally, I'm, I like the colour, I just want it dark, so I'm going to drag down the uh, lightness on the side here. I might have to make it a little, little different. And again, you, you get the hang of this playing about with it. I like that. It's now subtle, yet won't detract from the rest of the board itself. Brilliant! 
Okay, guys, it's challenge time for you. I'd like you to texture the white squares for me. So using a procedural texture on the white squares, do exactly what we've done with the black ones. Choose a different type so it's, it's kind of similar but different. And make sure it is visible, but again, make it subtle. We don't want it standing out and detracting. The board is the stage for our pieces to sit on, not the main feature. So pause the video now and give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's hop straight on over into Blender. Okay, so the white squares, so we can simply go to the chessboard, go down here, switch our material to white square. I'm gonna go to the textures tab. Oh, let me just scroll up in this case. I'm gonna change that pink straight to ooh, blue. Got a feeling white and blue might go quite well. Um, and I'm gonna name this texture white square. Okay, so we've got that. Let's change the type here to, let's just try anything for the moment. Not too sure on that one. Let's try marble. Marble's going to be cool, but that's a bit too spread out. So let's scroll down. Again, it's generated. Let's apply it to the object. Oh, that looks horrible. <laughs> you can see how playing with some of these doesn't work out to your advantage. UV also looks horrible. So let's go back to generated, and it's just too big at the moment. So for all the size here, Let's lower that right down, 0.05 by the looks of it, that's a bit better, yes I do like that, a little lower I think, let's play with the depth, and the turbulence, Ooh, oh that's interesting, uh, not that high though, a little higher than that, so you can go through here and play to your heart's content, oh I, I like that but it's too pronounced so we need to certainly tone that down a little. So I'm gonna to go to here and bring that back up and drag it towards the lighter side of things. It's gonna be incredibly subtle. If we're not too careful, it will just disappear. Okay. So we've got a kind of a marble effect down there. Is there anything else we can do to help pronounce it? Perhaps change it to sharp. So there are lots of options here. That looks like lacquer's peeling off at the moment. I think I'll stick to it being a bit softer in its tone. Oh, Blender Original. So there's a lot of different options we can have. Oh, that was a good pick. Let's just try another one quickly. Yes, I do like that. So there we go. We've got our board now all mocked up and ready. Uh, a couple of things that I'm going to do that you don't have to do, but I'm just going to sort them out. I'm going to group... Uh, these together under another empty. Again, you can group them just on top of one another if you want, but I'm gonna create an empty for us after centering called, where's the empties gone? I'm being blind, empty, just a plain access. I'm gonna call this chessboard. And another way you can parent objects is you can simply drag and drop them here in the outliner over the top of the parent that you want. So now the chessboard is all grouped together so I can turn it on and off at will. Excellent. Uh, the Oh yes, there was one final thing that I wanted to do there and I just wanted to see what this looked like if I set the shading on the chessboard surround. So now we've got that. If we set the chessboard surround to smooth shading. Ah, ha, yes. Uh, do I like that better? I think I do. I'm not sure actually. I'm going to leave it with flat shading along the board. I think I prefer the sharper edges on it. Okay, brilliant. How did you guys get on? Please share in the discussions and of course I will see you in the next lecture.